Hey viewers, we're back at the scene of the Bilderberg Hotel at the Savretta here, uh, up in the mountains in San Moritz, Switzerland. And we've been talking to some of the protesters and journalists up the hill. Um, there were many questions yesterday as to um, where were the rest of the Bilderbergers. We only saw apparently um, as few off of the actual attendees arrive, obviously because of the weather problems that we've talked about. Uh, the low-lying cloud cover, the rain, prevented a lot of them from landing yesterday. And so, as the Swiss newspapers reported this morning, the conference itself was delayed. The actual start of it was delayed until this morning. So the general feel from what we've been hearing the people who've been here all day again is the fact that a lot of them must have arrived in the dead of night, really late at night last night or even the early hours of this morning. Because so far today, since this morning, only less than a handful of cars have actually arrived according to the people who have been up here. Uh, obviously we've been back at the hotel uh, doing the articles, just come up to survey the scene. Um, so the question is, did the Bilderbergers arrive in the dead of night, which of course would be a quite a new phenomenon to do that. They're obviously very ashamed to be here and they hid their faces as we were filming them. So we're back up at the Bilberg Hotel live in San Moritz, Switzerland. It's quarter to five in the evening and we're, it's quiet at the moment. We're going to have more reports and uh, keep you updated if anything happens. And We're here live again uh, in San Moritz for the Bilderberg 2011 meeting. Uh, Rick Perry, who has been a Bilderberg groomed candidate since at least 2007, we intended it when he attended in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, is now floating the idea how to run for president. Uh, the media is buzzing with Will here, won't he, about how he's about to do it, uh, and about how his political advisors are turning from the Gingrich campaign they're on, and they're now getting ready to support him. It doesn't mean necessarily that he will be the candidate, but Bilderberg routinely controls two or even more hordes in the race. Uh, of course, they invited Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton to the 2008 Bilderberg meeting. Uh, so Obama is also a controlled candidate. Of course, someone like Mitt Romney or Palin uh, could also get the nomination. Palin has deep ties to Henry Kissinger, one of the most notorious Bilderberg attendees. Uh, Mitt Romney is also tied in with those. So it's not a matter of knowing necessarily who the candidate will be yet, but Rick Perry is one that they really like because he's closely associated with the Bush people. But at the same time, he's been building, waiting on this bus to move. At the same time, Rick Perry has been building his credentials as a pseudo Tea Party candidate, as a rebellious candidate in Washington, uh, calling for Texas secession and otherwise trying to build his uh, grassroots conservative image as false as it is. So again, he attended 2007 in Istanbul. He is a Bilderberg Group candidate, and uh, it's good timing too that the group is meeting this weekend, just as Rick Perry is getting ready to announce his candidacy. Federal Council. Federal Council. Okay. okay, we're here at uh, St. Moritz in Switzerland, uh, 200 meters above the Bilderberg Meeting Hotel. And we are here to present you this picture. This is our Swiss councillor. Uh, her name is Doris Hout. She was, um, she was there uh, yesterday and today. That's the... That's the... Uh, so... She, she's come by helicopters, and the Swiss army have helicopters. The, the Swiss army helicopters, and we have to pay this. This is a Swiss army helicopter, Swiss air force, mm -hmm. and we have to pay this. And so, what what is our federal consul, consular mean at this meeting, shaking hands with uh, war criminals, with pedophiles, um, even with those who, who forced forced the war against Iraq and Afghanistan? So. Later we, we go there with the nas national national councillor Batik, to congressman. Yeah, he's a uh, influential legislator in Switzerland who wrote the letter to the federal councillor and also to the state prosecutor. So to arrest the uh, kids and the other war criminals who come in there, and so our state representative is meeting them and holding some speeches for them, and so this, this is illegal. With the chalk spray and yeah, and, uh, um, I had chalk, st chalk spray with me and uh, I wanted to use it on the street, like it's legal and 
can be used, yeah. should be used, and it's the only way to be used. To it's not, it's not the first time for you. No, it's not the first time. We, we do it uh, a lot. We, we have uh, events we, we are organizing at the uh, 11th of September each year. We go uh, in several cities over Europe uh, in the speaking part and doing this chalk event. That means we are going to the streets, right, with chalk, some truth and facts and important information on the streets that the people can read because the people cannot read it in, in, the, in the official newspapers and, and, and what, what did you write on the street? Today, uh, yes. Uh, Two days here. ago? Yeah, um, that was something like, uh, build a bird, go out, go home, we are not your slaves, and yeah, that's it. That's and then the police approached and they approached, had a little conversation? They tried to stop me, uh, I was not finishing the first word, uh, build a bird, and uh, they came and tried to stop that. But yeah, yeah. I have a problem. So you stop the camera. Well, what's the problem? Stop the camera. I don't have to stop the camera. You come now. You have don't stop the camera. I don't have to stop. Don't touch my camera. I'm, I'm an American I, I journalist. You. I touch the camera. Don't when touch you, me. When you stay in America, you have to pick a problem with the police. No, no. Okay. In America, we have no problems okay. with the police. We have okay. actually more rights. Yeah. Stop the camera now. It's a, it's a problem. No, it's not. We can speak normally. Yeah, we can huh? speak normally, but, okay. but this is this needs huh? to be documented for legal proof. Okay. You must not document it. Yet. Yeah, it has to be documented huh? in okay. the court of law. You can stay there of the, on this side, huh? in the yellow corner. Right. And when you stay here, they say the police that you don't stay here. Huh? Okay. All right. Okay. Then you can go there. Bye. <laughs> I say this one time, and after the time, then we go in the office, huh? and then you stay. If you want to violate my and rights, then, and then you stay not in this area, okay? If you want to do that, violate my rights. From this country, we can make this, huh? okay? You have understand? Thank you. Bye. You do what you got to do. I'll do what I got to do. We should care because over the last few decades, Bilderberg sleuths have been able to smuggle out some of the minutes of the meetings. The Bilderberg Group has now admitted that they covertly, uh, more than 50 years ago, set up the core of the European Union to be a system for private banking cartels to take over uh, nation states. Uh, the Bilderberg Group has an authoritarian agenda. And Hillary Clinton back in the mid-90s was fined hundreds of thousands of dollars for violating U.S. federal law uh, for meeting with private individuals to set and discuss policy. And so we should be concerned about the Bilderberg Group because uh, this is the group that has openly promoted, through their surrogates and spokespeople, world government. So they're very authoritarian, and that's why they've gone to great lengths to have a media blackout. Uh, especially in the United States and Europe, and it's only the last few years with the rise of the alternative media that mainstream news, or corporate news here in the United States, has been forced to even admit it exists. E just three years ago, three and a half years ago, the New York Times came out and basically said that I was insane when I was in Chantilly covering it, and that no one was there and it didn't exist. So. They still sometimes say it doesn't exist, but more and more they're having to admit that it does, and the Bilderberg Group has a lot of top media people there and, and, and openly has them sign agreements not to ever speak about it. And then the heads of the Washington Post and others on record uh, have been caught then going and telling uh, their chain of newspapers not to report on it. And so that's the big issue. That's the problem with the Bilderberg Group. It really is uh, very close to the tip top of the uh, shadow government capstone. Look at David Rockefeller, whose family funded the uh, creation of the United Nations, uh, who gave them the land to build the UN in New York. Uh, the Bilderberg Group is always pushing to get rid of national sovereignty and transfer it to the private IMF, World Bank, private Federal Reserve. Uh, and now we see that with President Obama uh, going along with NATO with the attack uh, on Libya and saying it would last days, not weeks, and lying and saying his authority comes from the UN, he doesn't need the authority of Congress, which is a clear violation of the Constitution. It's similar to Caesar marching his troops across the Rubicon into Rome more than 2,000 years ago. This is classical tyranny. 
And it, it, it's this move globally for standardized laws that are created at the corporate level. Uh, just last week, WikiLeaks released documents on the North American Union meetings at Banff, Canada. In 2006, Judicial Watch had sued previously and gotten some of the documents. And they talk about a stealth, these are quotes, stealth North American integration and then merging that with Europe. So this is a global corporate governance structure that's trying to transfer power out of our Congress into the IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organization. And, and, and so that's why more and more we see Congress becoming really ceremonial or vestigial.